Hello and welcome to this short video about Jaguar XK8 Witch Breaks. This is video 64 in my series of XK8 videos. In this video I'm going to try and explain the difference in X100 standard brakes and how to identify them. If you're interested in Jaguar XK8, might I, su might I suggest you subscribe to my channel. Uh, please uh, click the red uh, square button, a rectangular button with subscribe written on it. Click the bell icon if you'd like to be reminded of any videos that are being aired. Click the thumbs up if you like the video, thumbs down if you don't. If you have any questions or comments, you can ask them in the comments section at the bottom of the video. Right, so the contents of this video is in five parts. First of all, I'm going to explain which discs are which. Secondly, which caliper and how to identify them. The difference in braking leverage and some other improvements in the braking system. Uh, how to upgrade your braking system if you wanted to. And basically what impact that has on your wheel selection. So first of all, which disc and the OEM standards. So in the beginning, at the start, from model year 1997 or um, VIN number 001246, right through to the end of model year 1999, 042775 both front and rear brakes had diameter 3 or 5 mm diameter brakes that was actually included in the launch of the XKR which was model year 1998 and 3 quarters which is VIN number 024687 so in the beginning XKRs even had teeny tiny brakes as well uh, next the brakes were improved and uh, given diameter 325 millimeters on the front but retained the 305 on the back and this was the the standard xk8 uh, brakes from model year 2000 um, uh, that's vin number a04808 but also um, the xkr actually started a little bit earlier uh, at model year 1999 at uh, vin number zero three six one nine four so already at that point Jaguar had seen the XKR needed a bit better brakes gave them to the XKR in model year 1999 and then decided to pass it on to uh, the XK8 in the model year 2000. Finally there was um, the third option was the R performance kit or the Brembo brakes these were diameter 355 millimeters on the front 330 millimeters on the back they were an option from model year 1999 on all cars, XKs and XKRs. But they did become standard on the XKR in model year 2003 or VIN number A35155 onwards. So in total, there are three options of disc on the front and two options of disc on the rear. So next which disc and how to identify them. So you've got your car, you know you've got three options on the front, three on, uh, two on the back. How do you actually spot them? The easy ones are the Brembos. So the Brembos tend to be, uh, well, they do need large wheels, which I'll go into later in the video. And you can see uh, the calipers uh, quite clearly, and they're a different type, which I'll, I shall talk about later in the video as well. Standard wheels, and standard discs are a little bit more difficult especially because they're difficult to measure because you can't actually get at the disc there's two diameters the best way of of uh, identifying uh, the diameter of your disc with standard brakes are the gap round the dust shields now Jaguar only made one dust shield for both uh, types of discs so if you've got a large uh, disc or the larger disc or the larger diameter disc, 325 millimeter, there's gonna be a small gap around the dust shield. Or as you can see with my uh, brake setup here, I've got a smaller disc and you can see quite a big gap around the edge. <laughs> if you're interested, the dust shield part number is left hand MJD 1933AA, right hand MJD 1932AA, but they're both the same for standard brake setup. So the easiest way to tell which diameter of brakes you've got is not to go out and try and measure them, is just look for the gap around the dust shields. So if you're interested, 
there's actually the three options of front disc. The part numbers are for three or five millimeter diameter is C2C, one, sorry, 41249. And at the back, three or five millimeter diameter is C2C, 14151. The front disc, three to five millimeter diameter or C2C, 41250. And the, it's as a same rear disc. The Brembo disc then, there's various, both front and rear, because there's a different part number for plane. You've got cross-drilled, slotted, cross-drilled and slotted, dimpled. There's lots of variations, which I won't go into in this video. Now you want to understand which caliper you've got and how to identify it. There are actually two types of caliper for the front and two types for the rear. There's the standard caliper and the Brembo caliper at both ends. The standard front caliper looks like this. Basically there's a, a C shape to it and a separate caliper carrier to the actual caliper itself. Um, as you can see here, the calipers part numbers are left hand MJD 7843AA, right hand MJD 7842AA. The pads are JLM21917 for the set. And if you want to the discs as well, I've added those part numbers. So if you're looking for a standard front caliper, you're looking for a caliper that looks like that. They're generally unpainted uh, as they come out of the factory, but a lot of enthusiasts like myself paint them various colors so you get red, silver, um, gold in this case. The standard rear caliper is a similar design. You've got that C shape around the pad, separate caliper carrier and the caliper itself. That's how you identify the rear calipers being standard. The caliper part numbers left hand is MJD 7853AA, right hand MJD 7852AA. The pads are JLM 21918. And there's actually shoes, which I'll go into a second. And the discs are are the part number I've mentioned previously. So yeah, not particularly unique about the back brakes, but used by other manufacturers as well. There's a second set of pads or shoes in the rear discs themselves. So inside the rear disc, there's a set of brake shoes which are operated by the hand or parking brake. These shoes are standard, whether you've got Brembo discs or standard discs and there are JLM 2209. They're actually, uh, the, the handbrake operates a series of um, pulleys in the center of the vehicle, then there's a brake equalizer, and then that pulls the, um, the brake pipes t from each side. It's, it's, it's a mechanically operated system. Brengo, Brembo calipers are quite different and there's no caliper carrier most of the time. It's a solid lump, they're a lot larger, and they look like this rectangular shape. The part numbers do change depending on the color, either silver, gray, or red, depending on the, the version of car you have. But the part numbers for gray, the left hand is, a uh, front is MXD15113CA, right hand MXD1512CA. The pads for a set are MXD1550AB. The rear is left hand MXD2713CA, right hand MXD2712CA. You can see there's a common thread here. And the pad set is for the rear uh, brake calipers is MXD2750AA. And the shoes again are, are standard, same as the, uh, the normal brake uh, discs. So there you go, that's how you identify Brembo calipers and the part numbers. Now I want to talk a little bit about uh, braking leverage. So over those three uh, sets of um, uh, braking systems or braking disc diameters, I'd like to compare or make some sort of comparison with the braking leverage difference between each one. Uh, generally the larger diameter a disc, the more leverage you have, that's the basic premise for why you have bigger discs, it's actually the leverage. The contact area for the shoe is generally very similar. So if you work it out as just the increase 
in leverage, uh, moving up from three or five millimeter uh, disc to three twenty five millimeter, you get a six point six increase, six point six percent increase in leverage. So a six point six increase in braking. If you actually moved up to three thirty, as on the rear Brembo disc, that equates to eight point two percent increase in leverage. And if you go to the big big boys, the 355 fronts, that's actually a 16.4% increase in leverage uh, um, by, use, by upgrading those brakes from a standard 3 or 5 millimeter baseline disc, assuming the pad contact areas are the same. A couple of other bits then. In model year 2000, there was a significant change to the brake booster. This uh, was down to Jaguar getting feedback from the customers that the brake pedal was very spongy on the early cars, not good brake, uh, brake pedal feel. So they introduced this new brake bus booster, which gave twice the amount of force per the pedal travel. It's still the same, there's still the same amount of pressure overall, but you don't have to put your foot flat to the floor to get it. There was also some mechanical improvement in the, the actual uh, bolting to the bulkhead was changed from three bolts to four bolts to try and secure it more securely to the bulkhead. So the definite improvement for model year 2000 for brake uh, pedal feel. In model year 2003 there's also uh, the introduction of the panic brake assist system. This is quite a clever system and it actually st uh, it senses the speed of movement of the pedal. So if you are panicking and you apply the brake uh, sharply, trying to uh, avoid an, uh, an object. The system will uh, sense that you've, you're trying to apply the brake quickly. And uh, even if you haven't applied the pedal right to the, the maximum extent, it will do that for you. So it'll, it'll apply full brakes if you apply the pedal quickly. It's interesting. So it'll assist you in the event of a panic. Okay. So those standard brakes, how about you want to upgrade? So I'll talk a little bit about upgrading now. One way to upgrade from uh, three or five millimeter discs to 325 is just to simply change the caliper carriers. As I've explained previously, the calipers are identical between uh, three, three or five and 325 millimeter discs. It's only the caliper carrier that changes. So basically you've got a pitch of holes where the caliper carrier is attached to the hub and then to the actual ca uh, caliper. And that pitch increased inc is increased by 10 millimeters to give you that offset of the, ca uh, the um, caliper. So that's a very quick and easy way to change it. Obviously you need to change the disc at the same time. The caliper carrier part numbers for a 305 are MJD 7860AA. But you need to change to the 325mm caliber carrier, which is MJD 7861AA. If you want to go to the big setup, the Brembo 355-330, it's a bit more involved, but reasonably simple. All you have to do is remove the, the disc and the, the caliper carrier and the, the caliper. You have to drill out the um, caliper carrier fixing points to M14 bolt the, um, the, uh, the calipers directly on and potentially cut away the dust shield. You can actually get um, new dust shields, but they're very, very rare. I think the fronts are practically unobtainable now. Uh, the, the backs are a little bit more obtainable. I'll show you the part numbers here from for the front dust shields, but most people just cut the edge away. So it's quite easy to... Um, upgrade to these um, discs and um, cal calipers. So if you're thinking of upgrading, what's the c upgrading cost per percentage increase? So if you were to upgrade to 325 from 305, the caliper carriers cost roughly £50. You use the existing calipers. New discs and pads price for uh, EBC brakes and maybe some red pads will cost you in the region of £288. So you're looking at £338 for a 6.6% increase in braking leverage. So you're looking at £51 per percentage increase. Obviously, that's only for the front brakes 
and uh, it's enough not to cause an imbalance. All the prices here are prices I've took from www.autoreservejaguar.com um, in the current year 2020. To upgrade as a comparison to the Brembo system, 355, 330, you're looking £1,200 for a second-hand set of discs, pads, uh, calipers and um, hubs. The, most of the time it includes the improved hubs. If you're not aware, there are two types of hub on the car. Early hubs have uh, 76mm bearings, but from uh, VIN number 031303 or model year 1999 onwards, they had a larger wheel bearing, an 80 millimeter wheel bearing. Whether four millimeter makes all that much difference, I, I assume it's a bit more of the construction inside the bearing, but the, the bearings were definitely improved for model year 1999. As you can get, if you're doing it properly, the, the suggested you, you get the bigger bearings. Including the brake lines and the pads, I say EBC pads and some new brake lines, you're looking at 500 pound. So you're looking for a total upgrade card cost to Brembo for about £1,700 to get you the 16.4% increase. So it's about £103 per percentage increase. Obviously with Brembo uh, calipers, I know the, it's the twin pot calipers and there's a bit more balanced of the area, but I'm just looking at like for like. But uh, the upgrade to the Brembo system obviously involves both front and back brakes, so the, the overall braking system is, is greatly enhanced, but there is a, you can see the cost differential there. If you want a simple, effective upgrade, you can go to 325 if you haven't already got them. If you want to go to the, the, the bigger upgrade, it is quite a lot more expensive. Okay, uh, finally then, which wheel? So if you were fortunate enough to upgrade to 355, there are certain wheels that are okay and certain wheels that aren't. All the ones I show here are all the ones that are okay. Nothing generally that um, is a, a 17, well all 17 millimeter wheels are not applicable. There's a couple of 18 inch wheels. There's actually the Hydra which became standard on the XKR and uh, the Winter BBS wheel and the Milan. Uh, two-piece BBS alloy. There are 18-inch wheels that are okay for Brembo. There is uh, one other aluminium whole-piece wheel, the Atlas, at 19-inch. And then you've got all the BPS split-rim alloys. So you've got the Paris, Detroit, Sepang, Montreal, uh, Perseus. I think there may be a couple of others, to be honest. But you need to be sure with the Brembo uh, system, not only have the bigger wheel, but also the offset, because the calipers are quite... Um, wide and they can clash uh, to the inside of the wheel um, so please be careful when you're selecting uh, wheels for your Brembo system there you go so hopefully that's covered all uh, disc calipers leverage braking and wheels hopefully that was informative for you and you enjoyed it <laughs> lots of part numbers uh, thank you very much for watching please like if you've uh, enjoyed the video please share it and Please subscribe if you'd like to see more XK videos.